This monitor has been the root cause of a lot of criticism for AMD's packs with the new Vega video cards, primarily because it's known to have severe flickering issues and we've managed to reproduce them. But the conditions for reproducing those issues really vary heavily based on the card and what you're doing. So it's not quite as simple as this thing flickers. And today we are looking at the C34F791WQ. Thank you, Samsung, for that easy to remember name. So the 791 is what we're looking at and we're testing it on the RX 500 series, the Vega 56 and the Vega Frontier Edition with different driver branches to see how persistent the flickering issue is. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by Synergy, the software that lets you share a keyboard and mouse between multiple systems. If you have limited desk space and multiple computers to command, Synergy removes the need for separate peripherals or a KVM and works as over-the-network software. Use our link below to get 50% off the basic or pro version. Most of the flickering stems from what Samsung calls their ultimate engine mode. There are three modes, ultimate engine, standard, and off for FreeSync, where it's just disabled. Even in Samsung's manual, they note that Ultimate Engine may cause flickering with this display. So it's a known issue even to them. Ultimate Engine widens the bandwidth provided to the ASIC on the panel driver, which means that your variable refresh goes from 80 to 100 hertz up to 48 to 100 hertz. So it expands the variable refresh rate range under FreeSync so that it'll work with lower frame rates. There are plenty of other issues with this monitor as well. We noticed a few weird patterns and behaviors when changing colors on the screen. So you have multiple different objects of high contrasting colors, like a movie playback and then a black or a white web page on the other side would sometimes cause color pattern changes and things like that. But that's not really what we're talking about today because those are on Samsung side of things. And it does impact the monitor's value to certain users, but we're really focusing on the free sync end of the argument. So with the flickering, we can reproduce it here. You're not gonna see it as much on that camera because of how the filming set up for me being in front of 2000 LEDs, but we have B-roll of it flickering. That flickering is produced on an RX 580 and it can be produced with the oldest drivers and with the newest drivers that were ever available and are currently available for the RX 580. No problem whatsoever. We can get it to flicker severely to the point where if you were gonna buy this thing and you had a 580, I would tell you absolutely do not do it. It's, unless you don't care about FreeSync, in which case, why are you buying it anyway? But it's not a good experience with FreeSync, with a 580, with the drivers we've tested. But there's an interesting caveat. If we test Vega 56, we actually see these issues pretty much disappear. And there are some differences with Vega Frontier Edition, but with 56, we tried Total War, which is known to be just really terrible for flickering with this display. We produced those results on the 580. You can see flickering in the menus sometimes. You can see flickering in the campaign mode and in a lot of other places. There's weird shadow flickering. There are brightness changes, all kinds of weird behaviors with the Samsung display and Polaris GPUs. But with regard to flickering specifically, couldn't reproduce it basically at all on Vega 56. We couldn't reproduce it in this demo, which is an old AMD FreeSync demo from CES and really reliably produces the issue on the 500 series. We couldn't reproduce it in the Total War games, in Ashes of the Singularity, in GTA 5. And in this testing, we did testing from about 30 FPS all the way up to above and, well, at 100 Hertz or above 100 Hertz if we felt like expanding beyond what FreeSync would allow just to test it. And the result was at all of those refresh rates and frame rates, we couldn't visibly to the human eye produce the issue on 56. We could pick up flickering with the camera, but there are a whole lot of weird variables there, like the camera shutter, for example, although at various different shutters, we still saw flickering on the camera for Vega 56, but not to our eyes. And regardless of what the reason for that may be, Ultimately, it's irrelevant if I can't see it, if you can't see it. Uh, three people here looked at it. We could not see an issue with Vega 56. So if we can't see it and a camera can, who cares? There's so clearly some weird reason there, and it's caused because the camera is not a human eyeball. So the issue seems to be non-existent on Vega 56 presently with the drivers we've tested, which are the latest public drivers and the oldest press branch of the drivers. 
What happens if we go to Vega Frontier Edition? Vega Frontier Edition is known to be on, as of its launch, an older branch of drivers that stemmed from Polaris, or at least Fiji, or something older like that. So throwing in a Frontier Edition card, we get some interesting results. The card at first looked like it wasn't stuttering, or flickering rather, at all. And if it's not flickering at all, then that kind of starts looking like it's some Vega-specific update. But as we watched it a little bit longer, we would occasionally see flickers pop up. It wouldn't be sustained like we got on the 500 series, but they would certainly appear. And it was present in this demo. It's present in Total War, which we filmed, and a couple of other places. So with that being the case, this is now a question of, is the flickering occurring because of some Polaris chip level defect? where FreeSync is just not working that well with Polaris, in which case, or at least FreeSync on this display, particularly with Ultimate Engine, since it expands the FreeSync range. If that's the case, that really kind of sucks for Polaris owners. If it's not the case, then it may be the, the situation that AMD can issue a driver update, much like they did with Vega, and resolve the flickering, at which point, where is the driver? Because it exists for Vega. Maybe it's just a time thing. Maybe the older cards are lower priority than Vega. That seems probable at this point. So we're not sure. It seems like it, this issue really, I feel like, has to be a, a chip level issue or a driver level issue. There's really nowhere else to look, especially given the cards we've tested. And with our task conditions and what we've experienced in testing, it's hard to declare if it's chip level or driver level because with Vega Frontier Edition, we still kind of see the problem and that pushes us towards assuming a driver level change since flickering exists on Vega Frontier Edition and not on 56 and they're the same architecture. That said, Vega Frontier Edition is a really special kind of card that has all kinds of features disabled, is broken in a lot of ways and probably shouldn't have shipped at least in the state it did. So it's hard to say if one of those hardware level differences in Frontier versus RX is causing this or if it's drivers. But all I'm telling you is the problem exists on the 500 series. We've seen it, which means it exists on the 400 series and probably, well, we know it exists on the Fury X as well, matter of fact. So all those complaints you've seen about flickering on the Samsung display, they're accurate. It's not just because they're pointing a camera at the screen. And unfortunately, pointing a camera at the screen, as stated, isn't such an easy way to show the differences. But depending on what you're looking at uh, in our footage, you, you see two different kinds of flickering. One of them that you'll see in the B-roll or have seen at this point in the B-roll is when the screen appears to flicker and we have scopes on this that show the response of how it flickers but it's only seen by the camera and that's on Vega 56 and the pattern of the flickering is more like a wave. And again, the human eye cannot see it. We can't see it. The other type of flickering is an entire screen flicker and this is the one that you need to actually be concerned about because that's what we see and is clearly not an issue of human eye shutter speed or something like that. That's the entire screen kind of going uh, whiter or lighter color and then darker or dimmer, and it's just flickering like crazy. That's on the 500 series. The scopes show that as well, but it's a different pattern. So that's what you make that distinction. When you're looking at the footage of the 56, just know that uh, we basically had to switch between things like phone cameras and our high-end camera because they don't detect things the way human eyes do. But yes, flickering is clearly an issue on Polaris. It'd be great if AMD can take whatever they did for Vega and apply it to Polaris, so that owners of Polaris don't feel like they're left out in the cold and forgotten over Vega. If AMD doesn't have that ability, it's probably a hardware level difference, in which case, the very least, we can tell you that as much as we disagree with the packs in general, and the fact that they're probably just in place to make sure AMD doesn't lose money on Vega, especially 56, the fact of the matter is, if you're buying the pack with Vega, because that's the only thing that the packs apply to, not Polaris, and you're getting this monitor with Vega, then the issue really seems like it's nothing to be concerned about. If you're planning to use it for Polaris, then take note. 
But that's, I think that pretty much wraps us up. There's not a ton more we can do right now to test. We've contacted AMD and asked, hey, do you guys know if anything in Vega has been updated to correct this issue? And they're looking into it. There are a lot of people at the company, so not everyone's going to know the answer to that. But we've asked, and hopefully we'll have an answer for you. But otherwise, whatever you think about the packs, whatever you think about this monitor in general, flickering doesn't seem to be an issue on Vega 56. With the card we've tested, we can't speak for all samples. So if some of you have the card as well, if any of you buy the monitor and use it with 64, which is a different card than 56, please let us know what your results are. You can easily test this, and I'll tell you how. This display, this demo is hard to find now, this windmill demo. I'm going to upload it somewhere, and I'll put a link to it in the description because it's the easiest way to reproduce the issue. You can also use Total War if you have that. Go to the campaign map. The next thing you need to do if you're using this demo is disable vSync, make sure FreeSync is enabled, go into the monitor OSD, enable Ultimate Engine, and uh, set it to FPS Sweep for the best results, and observe the flickering if it exists. You will see it at that point if it exists, because it'll go 55 to 60 FPS and produce the issue. If you're using a game to test it, ideally we found that the best frame rate range to reproduce the issue on Polaris is to sit between about 48 FPS, which is the low end of the refresh range, and maybe 60, 65. You'll see the worst flickering in those instances. If you're at 100 or above, it's just not gonna show up in our experience. So that's what you need to do to test it yourself, uh, and then you can toggle FreeSync on and off, and if it goes away when it's off, but it's there when it's on, that means you're seeing the flickering issue. And if you see that on Vega, please let us know so that we can look into this further. But as of our testing, we don't see the problem on Vega. So that wraps us up. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly and gamersnexus.net for more information. As always, gamersnexus.squarespace.com for a shirt like this one. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.